no BS, but if you want to get into the IT industry in 2024, then this video is for you. Let's get to it. So there's a lot of people out there who wants to get into the IT industry and I totally get it. There's a lot of money that people talk about. Hey, when you get into the IT industry and you have the right skill set, you make, you make a lot of money, you can make upwards six figures, you can make $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. And not to say that that is not possible. It is 100% possible. You could do it. I mean, if somebody has done it, you could do it. But today I am going to go over four pointers four pointers that you need to follow strategically to get yourself an IT job in 2024. So the first one that we're going to talk about today is something that people find it very difficult to actually get. Okay. And I know it's something that, you know, sometimes it gets a lot difficult, but then it is something that requires a lot of patience, right? It requires a lot of time and it requires a lot of patience. And what am I talking about? I am talking about skill set. So this is something that a lot of people tend to overlook when it comes into the IT industry. They feel as though that they can take a boot camp and that's it, they're done. You know, they're good. They can do whatever they want. They can apply for the job and they don't get it. No, it does not work like that. If you want to get into the IT industry, there's a couple of things that you need to do. So the first one is skill set. With skill set, what I'm making reference to is the fact that you have to stay stand out, right? When I say you have to stand out, I'm not talking about the general idea of you knowing Microsoft Excel. No, you know in Microsoft Excel is not really a skill set. You knowing how to use a PowerPoint is not really a skill set. You knowing how to navigate through Confluence or SharePoint is not a skill set. No, the skill set that I'm talking about is the real skill sets that company are looking for, like a Splunk engineer, like a cloud engineer, like a cybersecurity analyst who knows how to differentiate between malwares, who knows how to investigate these malwares, who knows how to use these seam tools who knows how to use these EDR tools. That is the skill set that I'm talking about. With those skill set, that is what will get you the job, right? So you as an individual need to get to that point where you actually can sit down, steady those skill sets. So say you want to get into the cybersecurity industry. Some of the skill set that you need to research and know very well that you can actually attain or learn. Number one is you learning scene tools. Two, you learning EDR tools. Three, you learning these endpoint detection tools that will make sure that you are a candidate that stands out. Three, how to automate stuff. As a cybersecurity engineer, you'll be going through a lot of patching. You'll be going through a lot of server patching. You'll be going through a lot of uh, um, application patching. And you're not doing this because you just want to do it. You're doing this because if there's any new updates that come up, you as a cybersecurity engineer, you have to be able to do the patching. And you learning these AWS patch management tools, you learning these Microsoft Endpoint Desktop Central patch management tools, that is what will make you stand out. If you are not standing out, you would be doing thousands of interviews and will not see any difference. And, and that's the honest truth. You will do several, several, several interviews. You will not see any difference. So skill sets is the number one thing. Investigate or research more on the job that you want to get into in the IT industry and try as much as possible to get the skill set that you need to make sure you're putting yourself up front through these recruiters. So the next one that we're going to talk about, which is number two, is project, right? Most people get these skill sets, but then they do not do projects. And the reason why projects is in this list is because most of the time, these recruiters do not really Really care about whatever job you did, right? I mean, they, they do not really care about whatever job you did, the years that you're in, the 10 years, the 20 years, the 15 years. No, in this 21st century, in 2023, heading to 2024, these recruiters are actually look, looking for somebody who can get the job done. They don't care about your 10 years. They don't care about your 15 years. They don't care about your 20 years. They want you to get the job done. So if you can get the job done and show that you've actually done projects, because let, let me tell you something here. At the end of the day, when you apply for jobs and you go for these technical interviews or you go for these interviews, most of the questions that they're asking you is scenario based. OK, so think about it. If they are asking you scenario based questions and all you did is to get a skill set is to learn Splunk on YouTube and you did not do any project or enforce it on any project. When you go for that interview, you're not going to crack the interview. You're going to fail miserably because you have not done any project with what you learned on YouTube. Does that make sense? So you have to actually learn those skill sets and then apply it on a project to make you that ideal candidate. So if you do not go through that process, believe you me, you're not going to pass that interview unless they just need somebody desperately and they're willing to teach you. They're willing to go through that process with you. 
They'll probably do that, but most companies nowadays, they do not want to go through that struggle at all. So you have to find projects. Utilize GitHub, utilize Reddit, utilize Discord community groups. Try to do projects on the skill set that you're gaining. So if you have a skill set that you actually learned, or you learned this new tool, let's say Tableau, Power BI, you learned Python, you learned several of these tools out there that will make your job a lot easier or make you gain those skill sets. If you learned them, there are several resources on YouTube that you can utilize to actually create projects. Utilize Udemy, utilize Coursera, utilize GitHub to get these projects done. Because once you get these projects done, that is what will differentiate you from a candidate who just completed college and doing the same interview as you're doing. That is what would differentiate you from anybody that's coming on board to do the same interview. Because when you have the projects, you have the experience. Let me tell you something here. The main reason why they ask for experience is because they want to make sure that you've actually utilized the tools or the skill set that you have. So. If you do have the skill sets and you're not backing it up with any projects, I as a hiring manager, I'm not gonna hire you. But if you have the skill set and you have the projects to back, those skill set, that is what you're looking for. So, number one was skill set, two is project. The next thing that most people fail at, and this is literally the number one thing that every single individual that I've spoken to, our, I'm mentoring right now, is failing at, is resumes. I don't know what the issue is with resumes, but every single individual has issues with it. I mean, everybody that I've spoken to, right? The main reason why I say this is because when it comes to resumes, you have to make sure that you're adjusting your resume per every application that you do. Let me repeat that. Maybe you did not hear me. Adjust your resume per every single application that you do. It's not automatic. Most companies are looking for tools like endpoint detection tools, right? Most companies are looking for people who have experience in Tableau. Most companies are looking for people who are looking for people who have experience in Power BI. Most companies are looking for people who have experience in Python. Most companies are looking for people who have experience in SQL, right? And they keep repeating it in the resume. So you as an individual applying for this job, try to adjust your resume. I don't know why it's so difficult for people not to do that. Because coming from somebody who was recently laid off, this is something I learned the hard way. That is why I'm telling you that today. You need to be able to adjust your resume per every single application you do. If you do 100 applications, make sure you're adjusting your resume 100 times. That is why I always tell people that try as much as possible. If you're looking for a job desperately, try as much as possible to apply for 10 jobs a day. Because when you do 10 jobs a day, it does not become overwhelming. Because you can actually adjust your resume per every single job that you apply for every single day if you're doing just 10 a day. A week is about 50 because, I mean, we have Monday through Friday. A working week is about 50 jobs a week that you actually adjusted your resume for. If you're not doing that, there is a mistake. You are not going to get calls. And it's not magic. The reason why most people are not getting these phone calls from these recruiters is because it is not being picked up by the ATS system. And the main reason why it's not being picked up by these ATS system is because their resume is not adjusted. Their resume is not revamped. Their resume is not looking how it's supposed to look to attract those keywords that they are looking for, for it to be put in front of the recruiters. That is the main issue. If you want me to go deeper on resume section on how to revamp your resume when you apply for every single job, I have some great tools that you can use. I mean, free tools, you can even use ChatGPT. But if you want me to go deeper on the resume side of things, let me know in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to do a dedicated video just on resumes, okay? So if you want me to do that, just let me know in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to do that. Okay, now to my last point. The last point that we're gonna talk about here today is something that most people tend to not do as well. And I feel as though that it becomes difficult if you do not do it because you need it, right? So the last one that we're gonna talk about today is networking. Right? When I say networking, I don't mean you going to these networking events. I mean, you could do that because networking in the IT industry is kind of like the number one thing that would get you a job. Well, not number one. It's one of the things that would get you a job. Let me put it that way. I don't want to give you the wrong information. It's one of those things that will get you a job. And the reason, main reason why I'm talking about networking is because I get the fact that when people go to LinkedIn, which is the number one application tool that most people use now, when you go to LinkedIn and you're applying for a job, you literally would go to the company website, apply for the job, or most people will use Easy Apply, which I tell you not to do at all because it goes into a bubble and if it does not go in front of the recruiters, you are not getting those calls. But let, let's scratch that. Now, let me talk about the essence of networking. The main reason why I'm talking about networking is because when I go to LinkedIn and I'm applying for a job, right? And then I see a recruiter's name attached to that job. What I do is I apply for that job and I ping the recruiter. 
<laughs> Make sense? That is me creating my network right there. She could choose not to reply, or he or she could choose not to reply at all, and that's totally fine. After all, I'll send the message to them. So what I do is I apply for the job, and then I send the recruiter the message to let them know that, hey, I applied for this job that uh, is on your company website or that you posted, and this is my application number of the application that I did. Nine out of 10, you'll probably have one or two recruiters who will respond to your message, okay? And let you know, you know, kind of like the process that you're gonna go through, and that is the easiest thing that you could do. It does not even take 30 minutes or an hour. Apply for the job, and then ping the recruiters. Normally, this is one trick that I'm gonna show you today. If most of these jobs does not have a recruiter attached to it, I normally would stay away from it, okay? I normally apply for jobs that actually have these recruiters attached to it because at the end of the day, I can ping the recruiters and tell them that, hey, I applied for this job, this is my application number, please do well to, you know, take a look at it if you can at your free time, and you know, we, we can bounce it off from there. But then, if you do not do that most of the time, and your res, see, if you do not do that and your resume is not revamped, ugh, the likelihood of you getting calls from recruiters is very, very low because you are not following the process that you need to follow to make sure that you're getting yourself out there to people for you to get the job that you need. But I do hope that I gave you some great jobs today. I am not going to waste your time. These are the processes that you need to follow in 2024 if you want to get into the IT industry. Like I said, I do hope that I gave you some great jobs today. Till I see you again, stay blessed, be blessed. And God bless. Peace.